What's up guys? Hope you all are doing well. We are in the gym. I'm with Derek Smith. How you doing, brother? Doing good, man. Doing good. Excited to get in some lifts, man. Yeah, so what we've got today is we're gonna run through some training in the gym for arm wrestling. So really wanna give a big shout out here to Arm Assassin Strength Shop. They sent out a bunch of cool toys that uh, we get to play with. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's gonna be fun. We got the whole gambit here. Pretty much a way to isolate and hit every single thing in the world. Every muscle in the forearm, we're gonna find a way to hit with all these tools for sure. So I have not, I have not got to play with these things. Uh, they you know, literally just got here and, and uh, this is kind of your world. So when it comes to training, you're obviously doing other normal gym lifts mm -hmm. alongside training for arm wrestling. Right. So I'm very curious on how you fit it into your schedule, mm -hmm. number one, and then what you utilize all these fun tools for and how they, how they kind of fit into your training. So however you want to go through that with me would be awesome. So we've got a, a range of different handles here that do different things. This is for grip. We're going to mess that tomorrow. Okay. Um, I didn't ask Lucas Raymond for any just flat cupping handles. So these are ones that Brian had hanging out around here. So we're going to use those just to, to talk about. Um, so this is cupping, 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 cupping. Okay. Um, and then we could actually say that the, this is cupping as well, but these are going to start cupping in different angles. Okay. These are going to what we're going to start talking about with pronation and rising. I'm excited about this. You excited about this one? <laughs> I, I can't remember the exact name of the handle on, on Luke's site. So the sorry. The chain puts it over the top. <laughs> man. I, I, that's all I'm going to say. Is well, Matt, yeah, that's he, he awesome. protects your hand, man. If the thing was digging in your hand. Yeah, that's, that's great. Suck. That's great. Um, so this could be used for pronation or it could be used for what we call rising or radial deviation. We just call rising. Okay. Um, so we'll start at a low attachment. So. Like I said, when we hit pronation, the elbow, we want to see the elbow moving. A lot of guys do pronation and they'll set it on a table or something and it'll just be like this. Okay. Right? But that's not really using the, your pronator teres the way it's intended. Okay. It's meant to pronate, but it's also meant to move your elbow at the same time. So when we're doing these curls, we want it down out the side of your hand, not over the front knuckle, not for pronation. Okay. We want it on the side of your hand. All right. And then curling towards our face. Now it should be kind of digging into your hand a little bit, or the pressure should be like right here in, in your palm, okay. or the top, sorry, not the palm, the top of your hand. And then we're curling to the face, right? Now the, you should start seeing your, your pronator teres cutting across your, it goes diagonal across your arm, okay. all the way down to your elbow. And you should start seeing that get kind of pumped up. Awesome. Uh, Devin Laird has, is known for this crazy pronation muscle that shoots across his forearm. It's all ugly. Maybe you can find a clip of that thing. <laughs> it's gross. It's all veiny. Uh, ugly or amazing? It's veiny. It's so veiny. gross. <laughs> <laughs> so back, you said back of the hand, knuckles are through? Yeah. So here. Mm -hmm. So then how far up do I come? Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, try to keep your elbow uh, tucked, in, tucked in there. Okay. There you go. And then come out. Mm -hmm. So we should be feeling the attachment here, shooting down to your, your elbow. If you're, if, you're con if you're contracting the pronation properly. And that's why this this handle is built to just further isolate the pronation to to how start. far should I open? I mean, if we're right now, if I was going heavy, I might do partials and stuff like that. But just for the us doing this, I, I would go I'm doing full range just to try to get a, a deeper pump to show you the muscle. Got it. I like that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. See, I don't. I wish I could tell them like good numbers. Like you hit 200 pounds on this, you're the man. Sure. You're the best in the world, but with different handles and different pulley systems and different ways of cheating with the lift, there's no real standard in arm wrestling for like what is amazing. Okay. We can just kind of eyeball something and be like, that seems like it's a lot. It probably yeah. is, yeah. but we don't know what the, the, the number is. There's no set number of the most awesome stuff. There you go. Now this is how we use it in top rolling, right? So when you're top rolling somebody, we're doing that. Or cool. even in a hook. We're still rolling. So pronation is such a big player in armor. I like that. So now with this handle, do you go to something else from that? Well, I think this one can hit rising as well. Okay. Um, so, so like if you're going to go for a top roll mm -hmm. here. With the, knuckle, the knuckles up pressure where you're doing that. So it, you would just switch it from the side of your hand to the front of your hand. It would go over these first, uh, these first knuckles right here. It would okay. basically cover your punch knuckles and your door knocking knuckles, right? Okay. Um, now with this, this is a really small muscle and it's very easy to hurt yourself with this if you go too heavy on this tiny muscle, okay. right? So what a lot of people do is when they're training their riser, they don't, you don't go full range. You don't go all the way down like this and, and drive all the way up because in a real arm wrestling match, you don't do that. Yeah. In a real arm wrestling match, this small muscle, if you lose it, it's lost. It's done, it's done for that match. Got it. So what's realistic, also, but also in arm wrestling match, you're generally not going to have your knuckles all the way up because you'll be covering that guy's thumb knuckle, right? Okay. So you usually start 
center. Okay. So what a realistic range of motion, if you're training for arm wrestling, you want to get specific with it, it would be straight to rising. Straight to rising, like half, almost like a partial rep. Okay. But that's realistic in terms of a match, right? And it, I'm just worried that if you go too heavy like this, you will strain. All that, that, little, yeah. that little muscle will get really well, straight Well, this is out. something that, you, unless you're using this and doing that exactly, mm. not, not yeah. really normal. Yeah, you don't really use this in daily life. No, no. <laughs> at yeah. all. So, in terms of pronation and rising, this will be the next thing I'll grab uh, for that. For in terms of like isolating more. Because um, like I said, I, I prefer to isolate. I, I acknowledge that some motions can get a little compoundy. I'm, it's not, everything's not perfect, but I do the best I can to isolate at all times. Yeah. As much as I can, right? So. A strap like this can hit the same thing. It can hit rising by grabbing oh, like this, okay, okay. or it can hit pronation a few different ways. This strap is nice for pronation because you can put it over your thumb okay. like this, and we can get that's, we gotta get that more strap work on the table so you okay. can understand how a strap feels in your hand, okay? Because it feels just like this. Interesting. Right? So when you're strapped in together, like yeah. you're, that would there's a there's feel. a strap that goes over your wrist and a strap that goes over your hand like this. Got it. And so you'll learn how to put pressure in in this bottom strap and pressure on this top strap to move weight. So this is a great way to practice for being strapped. Yeah, yeah, you'll definitely feel more at home using a strap like okay. this. Um, I, I use at home, I have one like this. I use a martial arts belt usually. Okay. I have bought one online, I have a couple online, and they're just super um, tough. They can move a ton of weight. They don't cut at all, right? Because okay. they're super thi thick yeah, and stuff like but that. but almost like softer, right. okay. Yeah, so I, I use a martial arts belt, but this is the same idea, okay. right? So this strap will go over your thumb. You want, some, some people train above their thumb, pronation. Like, like that handle was above our thumb. Yep. Then there's around your thumb, and then there's, uh, wait, it goes like below your thumb. Interesting. Right, so okay. now all the, the pronation's down here. Cool, right below. okay. So there are dangers of doing a ton of pronation way above your joint, is that your wrist can get what Devin calls spun out, where you hold, and it'll get crazy though. Like it'll be like wah, 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 oh, wah. Okay. It'll get all spun out. So then when you're rotating someone's hand, then the rotation kicks in. Whether if it was tight, the rotation kicks in right when you start leaning. So, so is that having a tighter, tighter joints probably yeah. better, right? Right. Rather than okay. getting too wonky by you doing these things that are constantly stretching that out. Okay. You know what I mean, if you keep it more tighter by doing the pronation, because the pronator, like I said, is down here. So we don't need it to be above the wrist a ton. We don't okay. need to do stretch it out all the time. Get that muscle strong by doing it with the strap around the bottom of your wrist, so that just the the muscle is getting strong. Then at the table, or when you need to. The, this will be tired. So you don't want to wear that out with training. Right. Oh, got yeah. it. Okay. That makes sense. Um, but yeah, so, so having a strap like this could have a great carryover mm -hmm. for that. And you can train it without necessarily having the pressure up here. It's more back right. here. But most people like to be able to just grab a handle. And just... Yeah. Yeah. So they both have their carryovers. Just know the risk of the hand. If you go, when you start going crazy heavy on the pronation, sure. it can kind of get, make your wrist a little bit wonky. Okay. Um, but yeah, so this one is just rising. And like we said, all pronation has a curling aspect to it. Um, and then keeping it through your thumb, that's why it's looped like that. And then when you're ready, it would be the same thing, it would just be rising. You go to the front, straight to high, straight to high, straight to high. So you have a little bit of elbow flexion with that. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's not important. I just do it just to kind of overemphasize the movement, I guess. So how far, like kind of start here? Yeah, I mean, because the pronation, the range of motion for your pronation is palm up to palm down. So a little bit of elbow flexion coming across. Mm -hmm. And I should feel it kind of in the middle here. Yeah. Got it. Now there's what I call defensive pronation and offensive pronation. Like I said, the range of motion for your pronation is palm up to palm down. Okay? Okay. So most people, 99% of arm wrestlers, especially in the United States, train just defensive pronation. They'll do exactly what we're doing right here with the pulley system low. And they're like, one. Two, three. Got it. Now, once you get your palm like this with the strap, now the strap is only making you do a hammer curl, right? It's no longer really taxing your pronation very much because it's pulling straight down. Okay. Right. So the second half of pronation, that part, the pinning part, where like you're about to pin somebody, yeah, that's not getting hit at all in this motion, right? Yeah. Really. So what we do is we go high pulley, and this is something that's gonna blow a lot of people's minds, especially all the arm wrestlers watching. Every okay. time I tell an experienced arm wrestler about this, they go, "Oh, you're right, dude. I've been doing partial reps my entire life." I've been going actually with the full pronation. Okay. So uh, that's why this pulley will come into play, or this handle will come into play a little better, is because you can finish the pronation movement through the high attachment by pinning it, right? So now my th I'm, I'm tight here, I'm thumb up, right? We work from being palm up to thumb up, now my thumb's up, and then it's thumb up to palm down, right here, right? Interesting. Now, this is gonna be a lot weaker than okay. you, go, you doing the other one. You'll be able to do a lot more weight the other way than this. but. What you don't want to do is there's a different type of pronation through, there's pronating through the muscle and then there's pronating through your frame, 
where literally, if I drop, I rotate my bones, yeah. it'll pronate your hand. Okay. If I'm not using the muscle flexion, just like, Ugh. I'm actually holding tight, dropping my shoulder, and, and just rotating, my bones are rotating this way. Got it, okay. Right? So what we don't wanna do is in this motion, because it's such a weak motion for us, and you're just going palm down, you wanna do this. You want your elbow to do that. Okay. You're trying to rotate your whole bone, rather because this part of the muscle is so weak. Right? That's why you stay light with it and slowly build it up. But then in a match, you know, you're top rolling someone, then you're finishing them, or you're in a hook and you're, like, and you're going palm down. Yeah, yeah. And you'll feel this more the attachment point up here rather than down here. Right, is that right? This one gets a little complicated, so okay. I would square up with it, face up with the weight, okay. bring your arm up here a little bit, and you're gonna finish with like basically this touching your nipple, that nipple. Yeah, but keep in the whole time, even if you're with your offhand, you can hold this elbow in so the elbow does not flare out at all. And then go completely palm down is the goal. And the more you Get do it, you here. should start feeling it up here. That's yeah. where you start feeling the burn. The natural, like you said, the tendency is for the elbow to mm -hmm. flare out. Because we're trying to, that muscle is that. weak like that. So if it's too heavy, we go, like I said, it's really weak muscle for you. No, me. it's, yeah. I can feel it. Crazy. Mm. That's crazy. It's Just a, it's, with a couple reps. It's a, it's a weird one. <laughs> but it, like, once I started hitting that, I think a lot of things fell into place for me. Yeah, my right? hands started getting more complete. The wrists yeah, are getting more that's, complete. Man, that's crazy. So yeah. grip work figures. Right, it's not nothing way that we're crazy that you haven't heard of a ton. Um, big handles, the bigger the thicker the handle, the more it hits your fingers, the more it gets your fingers working. Makes sense. Small ha diameter handles like this can you just let it go into your fingers, let it stay in your fingers and work, then you're getting finger work. Right? Okay. Um, but just keep that in mind that fingers do have a play, not necessarily crushing strength, but containing strength and, and being strong to your fingertips has a play in our muscle, a huge play. Um, in the straps, actually, grip has a bigger play in the straps than it does outside the straps. That's Which is weird, because I, I when we get into it, I'll show you how grip can be a bigger player in the straps than out. Okay. But Because you'd think, like, we're outside the straps, I'm trying to hold on to you. But once we're inside the straps, I can't run from you anymore. And so you're, you can really manipulate my hand, because I'm tied to you now. Awesome. Right? So they have a, a bigger player in there. So, um, in my normal gym sets, I'll do, like, I'll grab a barbell off a bench, I'll let it go down to my fingertips, and I'll roll it back up as deep as I can. Now, I can't get that deep of a cup. I'm, I'm standing over it that's more for the fingers okay and so what you don't want it's a mental game is that when you do finger grip work your forearm is blown you're done with it you're like oh man I got a ton of wrist work sure you got a ton of finger work in okay right your wrist is completely fresh your ability to do this wrist flexion is fresh it's just your finger um, um, contracting muscles all in here are just fried makes sense. right but you can yeah, still yeah. do that so people they're like oh I'm done with wrist work my forearm's pumped I'm good yeah. uh, we still got work to do <laughs> like sure. we still got stuff to do there's, after a, this. there's more, to, more yeah. to get done so and everybody just wants bigger and bigger handles. And that's fine, just know the bigger handle you have, the more it's in your fingers, so your fingers are working, and the less it's in your wrist. So when I take a standard gym handle, like this, at any gym you find, all I do is, instead of having it in my fingers, I keep it in my palm. I keep the pressure at all time going in my palm and never in my fingers, Okay. right? So now, when I do the pulley system, and I wanna target just, just my wrist, I don't want my fingers to work at all, this, so the pressure is cutting this way into my palm, two, Three. So at no point is my fingers getting any work at all right now, but my wrist is getting all the work. So you're, you're just focusing on the wrist. Yeah, there. just okay. just cupping. Now, then there's different types of cupping, like I said, there's, and this is where we're getting to the cone handle, and this is where I fell in love with this. Okay. But then there's cupping with the pressure high, like I was showing you, and then there's cupping where you supinate it and the pressure is low. Okay. Right, and then you'll be able to get deeper with the low cupping. So I'm just messing with this. Like I said, these are all great, and they help isolate. You can do amazing things without them. Sure. And people that watch these are like, a lot of people get so hung up, I gotta have the best equipment. You don't. Sure. You, you can, can do amazing it. things without it. Absolutely. It just helps to isolate. The cupping. So you understand what I was talking about, the pressures in this, and just either in the yeah, finger or in the palm. Yeah, you want me to try it? I mean, if you want, but it's just, you get it. Like, so you're, you're burying this more in right. your palm. And I would, so and I would literally turn my whole body sideways, so the whole pressure is coming through your palm and never in your fingers. You could literally open Got your it. hand and just have the pressure in your palm. And that's the goal. So then, if this gets tired, your fingers are still fresh. This is literally just wrist flexion. That's the only thing that's tired once it gets tired. Right there. There's nothing else getting blown up. Got it. Right? So the wrist is, is constantly building in this. Perfect. Now, isolating. We get into my favorite handle. I, I, you don't, like I said, you don't have to have anything. But if I was going to tell you to buy anything, I always say get a cone handle. They're my favorite thing. More, to more, more than this. Yeah. This is my this is my baby. I have I have a different I have another one in my right. bag right now. I mean, right now that's my favorite. So you're, <laughs> you're saying this is yeah we, okay. Right. So because this is a, a, a spinning handle like you have all the time, but the because it's cone shape, 
the fatter part will challenge your hand. Naturally, when you grab it, wherever the fatter part is in your hand, will, you will grip up and push into that part hard. Got it. Rather than always just contouring to the, to the handle, right? Okay. So if the fat part is near on the bottom, you'll naturally supinate into it and use your bottom two fingers to control it. Interesting. Because okay. that, that's, it's just thicker down there. Got right? it. Okay. So in terms of learning how to cup and control things just through your bottom two fingers or your top two fingers, this isolates that. Okay. Right? So when you're trying to hook, and we were talking about you snapping into a hook later or earlier, the bottom two fingers are a big player because you have those are the ones that are be getting around and have to really hold on to somebody with those bottom two. Got it. This isolates bottom two fingers. Or if you flip it upside down, it'll isolate your top two fingers. That's cool. Right? Yeah, I like so, it. So uh, for me, still, um, I let it work into my hand because I'm trying to target these fingers intentionally. Um, I'll let it go as far as I can and then I'll finish and I'll supinate with it. Right? I'll let it go as far as I can and I'll supinate with it. And that, that's just chopping into a hook. That's getting a hold of somebody. And then the opposite, when, well actually, have you go through that. Okay, with that motion. So we'll get into it. You just don't big burn, I disappear behind you. <laughs> <laughs> so again, elbow pinned here. Right. I like to face up with it a little bit more. There you go. So let it and come then out. Really focus on supinating and kind of chopping down while you're doing it. And the bottom two fingers are the thing you're focusing on the most. Always good, yeah, there you go. As deep of wrist flexion as you can possibly get. There you go. And then you feel how that the bottom, the fat part can be challenging your finger, bottom yeah. two fingers more because it's, it's, yeah. it's built that way. And the bigger the slope in the, in the cone handle, the better. Right, cool. So that's just getting like a hold of somebody and bringing them in. Yeah. Now, oh, that's great. there's a move, the most complete move in arm wrestling is called a, a high hook. It, the, the reason I say it's the most complete move is because it controls the top part of the hand. And from, if you control the top part of someone's hand, you can go wherever you want after that. From there, from control and height, I can go into a hook, I can go into a top roll, I can go just straight sideways. I'm at the top of the tower and I'm controlling everything and I can dictate what happens after that. So a high hook, a, a normal hook like we were doing, a deep hook, you're chopping in and low on mm -hmm. somebody. A high hook, which if you master that, you're gonna be a master of the world, right? Uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's an outside move because your shoulder dips backwards. You control someone's hand, but instead of continuing to roll out like a top roll, you control their hand and then you stand back up and then you can jam sideways. You can do whatever you want. You don't continue to just to roll. Okay. You can kind of just, you can just float your arm sideways because their hand is like, and, they, sure. and you have them. Okay. So you can do whatever you want from there. So it transitions that every move. But the, initiate, the initial pressure when you're getting in that is learning how to cup through your index finger. So okay. all pressure uh, is on this ridge from my thumb up to my index finger. All okay. the pressure is there. So I'm going knuckles up into the handle right? Be, to have that rising pressure. Okay. I'm, I'm pronating. So once it gets right here, I'm having pronation pressure okay. into it. So it's kind of, it's kind of like a compound movement. I do this for, to make strength gains, but also to get that muscle coordination of using these three different cupping, rising, and pronation all at the same time in a, in a movement, in a, okay. in a handle, right? So rising. So these fingers literally come off. So I don't want them contouring to the handle and dropping my rise. Okay. I want to be fighting the handle at all times. So basically you're grabbing just with yeah. the, index and yeah and almost just my index right okay and then um so knuckles up and I, all the pressure at all times is in this ridge there's no pressure anywhere else in the, in the rest of my hand and then rising and cupping now i won't be able to cup this deep but you're going to feel that pressure here you're going to feel it in your pronation and all that stuff and you're going to get used to and cupping still pin pin the elbow in mm -hmm. here so as i'm grabbing there bringing it to my body but mm -hmm. keeping the elbow tight so knuckles up your arms your knuckles be as high as it can be there you go. <laughs> so, step forward. Okay. Step forward. Okay. And then, um, and then all the pressure on your index finger, you're going to cup in and then God, you're so tall. <laughs> it's like, it looks, I don't know why it looks so weird right now. <laughs> but you were, the, you were about the same height. Start, start, start the motion of cupping this way. Okay. And then cup, cup this way with your wrist. No, cup. Oh, cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. And then, so the pressure is always in this ridge, your, your hand right here. And then you can lean back and finish all the way to your chest. So open here. Yeah, but use, um, have your elbow going to the back of your body. Got it. As you do the motion. Like forward so here. Yep, yep. So still up then in, then over. I wouldn't, don't grab the handle so high. Grab okay. it more down low, but then knuckles up into it. So like here? Yeah, and then those bottom fingers leave basically. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So I'm still here, but trying to pull my wrist up. Yeah, as you're doing the motion, you definitely have knuckles up like that. Yeah. Okay. And then in here and then back to the and body. Remember, it's a wrist flexion exercise. So we're trying to get that thing flat, as flat as we can get it. Okay. There you go. There you go. Oh, I like it. That's good. Mm -hmm. And just the cone part is what isolates that, that wrist motion. So I'm 
Is that right on the finish there? Yeah, I mean the, the elbow movement we're not super concerned with on this. I just wanted to make sure you're using the full cup because before you were kind of going. No, you're, you you're doing it, like you said. You feel it through there. Mm -hmm. That's that's good. I just don't want you jamming sideways. You're getting partial cup and jamming sideways with the yeah. hand. Yeah, right. We want it's for wrist flexion. I like it. Right. No, that's that. Whoa. <laughs> so All that's, right. I love, I love cone handles, man. Those are those are my favorite. No, ones. I can see. I can see it. It's a versatile mm. thing, like you said. So you flip it around, and then we can work here and just chop. And you're much more on the bottom look. there. Right. Um, so now we're getting into, into cupping and hitting different angles of cupping, right? Or wrist flexion. Now to build balance, this is going to start getting more and more compounding and more and more. Now we're hitting four different angles at once. Okay. Um, this is the same idea as this handle, but just simplified and smaller. Okay. Right? Which remember bigger is just means it's more in your fingers. That's all it means. Got it. Right. So this handle, which I don't I forget what Lucas named these handles. Sorry, Lucas. Um, Basically, you torque it up, not twerk it up, you torque it up, right? <laughs> and so it's like, it's like this, right? Now, when I'm doing the cupping with this, what it's trying to do is it's trying to dump my wrist, totally, yep. right? And it's challenging my ability to cup. So it's forcing me to cup high and control the top part because all the weight's up here. Okay. So it's forcing me to control the top while I go sideways. Now, it's, it's not about the grip. Everything's not about the grip. It's about where the pressure's at in your hand. So you're gonna feel this isolate a little bit more in terms of trying to make, make you're gonna be wanting to pronate it, you're gonna be wanting to rise against it, and then the cupping is gonna be all the pressure's gonna be up on the top part of your hand while you're doing the cupping. Got it. Right, so, and then the opposite. So essentially kind of the same movement. It's, yeah, it's gonna be the same movement, it's just, because it's coiled up, it's gonna be a little bit harder. Or so how much, how much or, or, bring it, or drop the weight, coil it up a little bit, now do it. And keep your knuckles up because the pressure's at the top. So you see how it's trying to it's trying to bust your hand down. Yep. The pressure. And so then you do cupping still and just pull back or just slide your elbow back. It's cup in the wrist. You don't do it on the side of your body. Just bring tuck your elbow football tuck. Yep. And then keep your knuckles up and fight that 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 high side. I like it. It's the wrist right. The wrist so right. here mm -hmm. and then wrist, in. all wrist. Wrist is most important. I don't care if you move your arm at all. Just as long as you get that full wrist cup. Yeah. Yeah. You don't even have to move your arm at all if you don't want to. That's just internal rotation. That's just your chest and shoulder. So kind of come, come up, come in, then down. Mm -hmm. And you get you get more used to it as you mess with these handles and spend more time. Then eventually your sets of like, so that like I'm not finishing the side of my body. Sure. Because that's just rotate. That's just chest and shoulder. I'm just just building that up mm -hmm. over yeah. and over, just cupping and cupping. Now, same thing. Flip it around. Uh, wait. Or you can do it this way. Um, but same thing, but switch. So now it, I'm chopping to keep it in place. I'm doing down pressure, which okay. is radial deviation. And then I'm cupping and supinating through the bottom. So getting someone into a hook. Okay. And you're gonna feel that in the bottom of your wrist. It's gonna make your wrist really wonky. Okay. Right? Interesting. So what, what part, it doesn't matter where I'm, I'm just kind of grabbing it. Yeah, just make sure it's coiled up so this is trying to spin out of your hand. So a little bit more there. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So that's just the complete opposite, right? So we're supinating and down pressure, chopping. There you go. As you, but the most important part is still the wrist flexion, the, the, getting the full cup in. Yeah. But pulling back on that mm -hmm. bottom. And just bring the elbow back and just get a full wrist cup in, full wrist flexion. There you go. I'm gonna get you strong, Brian Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> I like, Honestly, the different pressure is fascinating mm -hmm. with this. Well, the, the wrist yeah. is so complicated. I mean, you can do something, look at all these directions it can go, it's, like it's getting, amazing. and there's muscles for each no, one. It's the, way it, the, the way that it feels too, when you're doing it, that's like, it's, it's very, uh, like I said, fascinating to me because you're, you're working through this and you can feel it, right? So you, now you're thinking about, okay, and, and again, after kind of playing around on the table a bit, it's like, okay, how does this equate to that right. in what movement? Could this strength be ben very beneficial? Mm -hmm. And and the carryovers there, mm -hmm. you can feel you can feel that for yeah. sure. Because it's all hand and wrist. I mean, step one, any arm wrestling match is getting your hand to look the way you want it, and that's where the fights at all the time. Yeah. When I've gotten embarrassed on the table because someone has a stronger hand than me, just <laughs> just out. Okay, <laughs> it just goes. Um, so now cupping. Oh, we didn't get a flat cupping. See, I like the chains. This is this yeah. is good. <laughs> yeah. This is but this is a similar idea to this, right? Yeah. Coil it up. Okay. Um, people. This has been called a lot of different names. Um, most people call it a wrist wrench. Now, there's see there's three different holes. So yeah. if you have it on the top hole right here, then as I'm, this is just for flat cupping. 
And, and it's, it's just trying to spin out of my hand that way. Okay. Right? So when it's on the center hole, it's just center pressure. It's just real, Makes real sense. general pressure, just right through the center of your hand. Um, so I'm gonna mess with that one. I'm just keep it cold up a little bit so it's really kind of like spin out. Yeah, yeah. And that's just real center cupping, football tucking your elbow back, just getting a deep flexion on your wrist. There you go. I try to never let my wrist go backwards, even in training. I go straight to in. Just right there. Yeah, straight to in, never backwards though. Like it. So then, so then, I mean, as you can guess, once you go to the high, uh, this high one right here, now there's gonna be more pressure on this top one, mm. right? So as there's more pressure on the top one, it's gonna be trying to dump my wrist down. Sure. So as I'm doing the cupping, I'm gonna be rising into the handle at all times to get my cupping stronger. Wrong. So I'm stronger at cupping with my knuckles up on the table. Okay. Not just dropping my angle and cupping in, right? So it just challenges that. There are two flies in this entire gym. I know, and there are two of them. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we've, been, we've been getting them. <laughs> there you go. And keep that, yeah, keep that knuckles up fight going. There you go. I like it. Yeah, that's an interesting one because mm -hmm. you can definitely tell very similar to, to uh, right. this this handle where the pressure's up, but it, I don't know, I mean, it, a little bit different though. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit different, but still very much that same effect. Now the, the last handle we're gonna get into, we'll do, I'll show you the chopping one as well, man. but this is the same idea, just low, and cupping through the bottom ridge of my hand, my pinky finger and my ring finger, and okay. supinating in as I do the rotation. Gotcha. So my, my elbow's not really moving that entire left. Right? Elbow's yeah. stationary. It's just all wrist work. So the bottom ridge, your pinky ridge, that bottom part of your hand should be the pressure. So I'm trying to apply some pressure down here. Yeah. Yeah, then yeah, in. Yeah, there you go. Would this one be where I want to come in as well? Mm -hmm. the, the moment, once you got the wrist flexion done, once you do the wrist curl, that's it. We're done with the motion. Because now if you bring it here, that's just using your shoulder. I mean, what's the, I mean once you're trying to do shoulder. So I'm thing. staying there and bringing it here. Yep. And that's really where I want yeah, to go. Cool, man. Okay. So now there's a concept that Devin came out with a long time ago. I always say Devin, I say Devin Larry, because Devin pushes a lot of things. He's kind of the leader in a lot of ways. So he hates holding on. Devin's whole thing is about strap work. Okay. He, he, like I told you, he always goes to the straps on an arm wrestling table. So he, you'll never catch Devin holding on to anybody. Okay. He'll never actually be like chasing on somebody. If you're not either you're holding on Devin or you guys are in the straps. There's gotcha. all your own options, right? Gotcha. When that match starts, his fingers are open and he's going. And you can hold on or go to the straps, okay. right? So his handle, uh, the multi spinner, I, I made a knockoff version of this where I don't have to loop it. So we might have to might have to cut while I try to figure out how to do this one again. <laughs> uh, but I know it's this the whole point is to replicate a strap. So it goes over the back of your hand, around and then um, around. So this is the low attachment. So like a strap, this is hanging on for me. Interesting, right? okay. So now when I do the wrist curl, I'm not using my fingers at all. Okay. Right, it's just in my wrist. Like okay. when you do strap arm wrestling on a table, you don't need your fingers anymore. Okay. Right, uh, it's just, it's all, it's all in the wrist. And you have them stuck in the wrist. Uh, I'll do the opposite. So <laughs> the high one is like around the back of the hand. <laughs> Sorry, Devin. He's yeah. probably, <laughs> it's probably the best. Yeah. yeah. You're doing it all wrong. Okay. Uh, so I think that's it. So as long as I'm, as long, the whole point is to have the strap engaged in your hand. So you're, you're feeling tension there with the strap. Yeah. So you're, you're bound to it. So let me try to get this on your hand. All right. Let's see if we can get this on your hand. Okay. <laughs> um, so it was high like this. It goes across the hand, down, and then around here, and then loop it again. Oh. You can go there with it. Oh, she's got it there. So just make sure that's a little bit tight. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, one more and loop it around. Put this. There you go. Got it. Now, you can, should be able to open your fingers if it's straps on tight, really. And then it's all in your wrist, all in the wrist flexion. So you have to oh, chop. Okay. So it's doing the same thing. It's still trying to open up the top of your hand. You have to chop down to do it. But now it's all in the wrist and got not in your fingers. That's why if people ask me what the most complete tool is, I would probably say this is the most complete tool in terms of hitting the right direct pressures. Uh, where you need because if I wanted I could just hold on to it too but right? I could just not wrap it around and just hold on to it like the other handle but if you loop it around like this then it, it targets without having to hold on it's not challenging your fingers no. you don't want to be yeah. holding on the arm wrestling yeah that's 
it's it's such a unique feel and there's mm -hmm. so many little variations here mm -hmm. to, to get good at all of it you know right. it's, i like that it's, it's just really isolating cool. and isolating and isolating <laughs> i mean um if you guys if, i know i didn't probably wrap it the best if you guys are going to watch one of devin's videos he showed how to wrap it a thousand times i just forgot how to do it off the top of my head because i don't use this one normally um I need, i'm trying to get more into it yeah so no that's great man so you would how many of these would would you pick one attachment and do multiple movements in a training session just with that and then so like for example i could hit a few with this or like this tool seemed like there are several different things you could do so you're training today i'm just going to use this for my training i'm going to hit mm -hmm. maybe five different variations with this handle yeah i'll do or so would you would you rotate through a few when, when i do cupping day remember so i do Cupping, pronation, or rising. So cupping day is everything we just talked about for the last 20 minutes. Yeah. So I'll, and I'll alternate. I do five. I pick five of them. Okay. And then I'll, and either I'll pick some favorites that I stay at, and I'll track those and stay on those same ones for a few months, or I'll yeah. just kind of alternate around, keep things guessing and moving. Okay. But fingers, cupping low, cupping high. And you can do hit all that, all these different handles we just messed with. We can hit all these different forms of cupping. Gotcha. And so just depending, or there's some, they have handles that are two-handed at the same time. So you structure, you structure training out where it's like, hey, I'm going to make sure I'm hitting all these variations of movements right. but build it into the week yeah so you, you're kind of touching on all of it mm -hmm. um and now how often i mean are you doing you're doing it with every training session something yeah so some the, the only thing that I'll, I'll switch up is that say i'm getting ready for a match and i realize the key to beating this dude is knuckles up and cupping so like, you, i have to go high so i'll switch the order i'll maybe okay. make sure that's the freshest lift i do and i can put more energy and time to that one before everything's kind of blown up gotcha um but Still, the same, always five So you prioritize. Yeah. I'll on, prioritize. on what you need to potentially work on, right. or if you uh, identify a weakness you mm -hmm. want to build within yourself, like right. breaking the movement down, mm -hmm. or you're on the table and it's like, hey, I really feel like I need to work on this, this, or this, then I'm going to put it in and, and prioritize it a little bit. Yeah. Which is normal. I mean, that, that would make sense for breaking down any lift. Right. Like, it's kind of, the way that you're describing arm wrestling is very much how I would say that I kind of broke down strongman, right? So mm -hmm. instead of the total movement, we're gonna break it down into parts mm -hmm. and we're gonna get great at all those different parts and then we're gonna put it back together and at the end, it's probably gonna be pretty good right. because all the parts fit together, mm -hmm. right? So like, you know, all these different attachments are tools to get better ultimately for being on the table, right? Yeah. So you built the strength up and now you can, you can measure where you're at. Mm -hmm. it, it makes complete sense, man. It's like you're breaking it down and I don't know why in, in my mind, again, this is, you know, all new to me uh, with the tools and training, whatever, but it, logically, I don't know why you wouldn't do it exa that exact same way. It's right. like, let's, let's check the table time, maybe take some notes and say, hey, look, I need, I need to get better at this, this, and this. Let's go to the gym. Mm -hmm. Let's try to figure out a way in the gym to get better at those things. Right. Then we'll apply it back to the table. And, and you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you're building up in that fashion. It makes a lot of sense, man. And there, and there's and there's guys that have been successful the other way. It's just purely table time or, or replicating arm wrestling. But it's just like, I just, for me, it didn't give me the comp. I'm big, I'm a head game guy. I wish my head game was greater. greater. I wish I was like more competitive and I wasn't needing any confidence so much. Sure. But I do, right? right. And so uh, since I'm a head case, then I built by tracking my numbers and knowing I'm stronger. Sure. It translates through confidence. Because, yeah. Because I, I need to have all that confidence in, and I know I'm stronger. Those ones leave me guessing too much. Sure. I think I'm stronger. I feel stronger, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Right. Okay, no, yeah. I know I'm stronger. So sure. now I'm ready to go beat this guy. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So for me, so. that that works. But like, yeah, Devin doesn't do any of these gym lifts. <laughs> There's videos of him trying to do curls and bench press, and he, he laughs at it. Like, sure. He do that stuff. Sure. Uh, so he ju he just gets on a table or, or uses different things mm -hmm. and makes it happen that way. Right. You know, and I would imagine it. It just depends, man. It depends on you know person to person. What you're doing to me makes the most sense mm -hmm. in a training because I would need to, I would need to break it down into parts. Mm -hmm. I would have to, right? Like it's kind of, okay, cool. We get this, but then I would want to take notes and I would want to, you right. know, kind of go in the gym and, and have something to compare it to saying, Hey, I did this. Now I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. Right. And that would build confidence. And right. it's no different than, it's no different than walking in the gym and let's just take a normal bench press. For example, if you put a plate on, and now you can put on two plates. Well, guess what? You're stronger. Yeah. Right. Like it's it's a very easy way to to, to measure it, and in some way, shape, or form, 
that strength has got to equate to being on the table and being mm. better. So, well, and, and troubleshoot. I hate losing a match and being like, I lost because uh, he did the arm wrestling thing and I lost. Or being like, I lost because my, you know, internal rotation was exploited, my pronator teres got shot, my, you know, bottom two fingers couldn't hold up, and knowing exactly what failed and what went wrong and what situation, but then you now I know what up. to fix. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, so knowing the motions. Well, and that's, I, I think, it, you know, in any, in any sport, as you, as you get to a different level, you have to break it down like that mm -hmm. and and be more technical right like right. you can get into it and you know it's it's i'd imagine you know being your size whatever like you like you were saying with different training partners whatever there's guys that maybe are more technical that you could easily you don't have to really work that hard mm -hmm. to beat them but once you get to a level where now you're standing across from somebody that's very similar in strength mm -hmm. and now it's kind of like okay technique wise maybe this is a little bit better and you're able to exploit it so mm -hmm. it's a ch it's a chess match but, uh, and I've said this about deadlifting before when you're calling numbers, it's a, it's a, a grown man chess match, mm -hmm. right? But you have to be strong enough to execute the move that you call. What? You've been saying that? Yes. I've been saying that the time time in arm wrestling. I said arm wrestling is like chess, but you have to earn your pieces. Or your pieces. That's yeah. even better. There you go. That's, that's awesome. That's, yeah. <laughs> so just got to be strong enough, man. So yeah. hopefully you guys take something away from this. Um, you know, I know that we're not doing crazy weights with this, and, and uh, I think that I will need to get into it and build up a little bit more, and then, you know, maybe we'll, we'll uh, come back and test a little bit more after I've got some training and built that base a little bit, just to see where some of these lifts are at. Um, you know, because walking in the gym with some of these new movements, it wouldn't be smart out of the gate to go max effort to, to try this. But, you know, once you get it built up, like I'm very curious to see what I could potentially do with some of these lifts and, and uh, you know, what's possible, right? I mean, at, at the end of the day, that's the question. Mm. That's the question that, that I have wanted to answer basically my entire life with everything that I've done is what is possible, right? right. And, and, and where can you go and, and uh, you know, having you out here, man, and running through these things like my wheels are turning and <laughs> I'm just playing with like, okay, this or that. And it's, it's exciting. It mm -hmm. really is exciting to me. And I'm not just, I'm not kidding about that. It's like just feeling these things. It's, it's the work capacity. I want it to go up, right? right? Like, and I want to feel more weight and I want to do more things. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, man. And I'm sure that anybody that's in the sport or you're looking to get in the sport. Um, I mean, this is, this is a, a lot of technical talk and you could rewatch this video probably 20 times to pick up something different about how to do this or do that. And, and to be fair, I'm probably going to watch it myself <laughs> as I'm learning, um, to just try to, to, to perfect a few of these things, but, uh, definitely appreciate your time, man. And we've got, uh, got some more fun to have, but uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you took something away from it, learned something. Hope you're all doing amazing. For now, go out and be great, and we'll check you guys later.